Today we look at the swing mechanics of Barry Bonds. Hey, what's going on, fellas? How we doing? Matt Antonelli here. Uh, today we're looking at uh, the swing mechanics of Barry Bonds. We're going to break it down. I've been asked by a bunch of people to kind of go over his swing and talk about it. So that's what we'll do today. Uh, first, I want to start off with a quick, my quick thoughts on Barry Bonds, because I know anytime I talk about him, and I know when I throw this up, there's going to be a ton of people that just start commenting, oh, steroid user, steroid user. He was nothing without steroids. Let me clear the air first. People say that his career was all about steroids. That's all everyone remembers him uh, by, or most people do. And most people will tell me, oh, he was nobody without him. Look at the stats and check the stats. Look back to when he was this skinny little beanpole, right? He was still a 30 home run guy, a 40 home run guy. Yes, he hit 73 when he went on steroids and he got big and huge. But his numbers were ridiculous before he was ever big and huge and on steroids, right? All of his numbers. He walked way more than he struck out basically over his whole entire career. There were years where he walked twice as many times as he struck out way back again when he was skinny um, before he was ever on steroids. He won the gold glove basically every single year. He had over 500 stolen bases. His on-base percentage was over 400 every year way back when he was a young player. And then it went up to 500s. And then 600s, you know, his numbers became ridiculous. They were like video game numbers when he went on steroids. Um, but he was great over his whole career. And he was going to the Hall of Fame regardless, right? So, um, and when you look at his swing, his swing was like very similar his whole career. It didn't change very much at all. And, you know, the things that stand out to me when I watch him are, you know, he had, for me, he had probably the quickest and shortest swing while creating just a ridiculous amount of bat speed. That's my favorite thing about his swing. It's probably my favorite swing of all time. I love Manny Ramirez's swing. There's a lot of guys that I love, but Barry Bonds' swing is just absolutely ridiculous. So let's break down um, the things that stand out to me that, that I see when I watch his swing and things that I think helped him be successful. Forget about, again, the steroids and all that stuff. Let's just look at the swing and why this swing worked, whether he was – you know, 170 pounds or whatever he was, or when he got to be 245 or 260 or whatever he was when he was a big, huge guy that looked like a middle linebacker. So I always preface when I'm breaking down guys' swings. A lot of things we talk about today are things that we've made videos on. So I'm not going to spend, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes talking about each individual part of the swing and describing it in depth. Um, I will a little bit, but go back and check out our other videos because we spend a lot of time talking about many of these aspects of hitting that we're going to break down uh, now, so the first thing is um, when he when he makes his move, right, his his lower body and upper body are working in, in opposite directions. So this is a huge key in hitting. We break this down and we talk about it with most hitters. And it's a move that that younger hitters um, and non elite hitters, a lot of them don't do this. But when you watch elite hitters, guys that are really great, you're going to see this move where so he basically, you know, he has a little bit of a bat pump right here, right? And as the bat kind of gets to the bottom here, you're going to see he starts to move out. So if you draw kind of a line there, you're going to see here comes the move, the sideways move. He's going to start to move forward. And when he makes that move, you're going to see that the hands and the upper body, let's just talk, say the upper body, pulls back as the lower body moves forward. So he's using his back to pull his hands back. It's a feeling of, you know, it's a feeling of starting a lawnmower. Um, think about setting your hand back like you're going to throw a punch, basically. Right? So I'm pulling back as I'm moving into the ball. And as my lower body or my back leg starts to turn. So you can see, you know, if you watch him, his back leg is going to start to turn here as he's moving forward. So pull back, pull back, pull back, move forward, move forward. Now my let my my rear leg starts to turn, and you can see the hands are still setting back, and he's getting ready to launch the bat. But this is where you see that tension being created within the body. So 
as I'm pulling back and my back leg starts to turn, and it's it's blurry in this video, but I always talk about how you can see the shirt being pulled or tugged because the back leg is turning and the upper body is setting back. So you get this big fight going on here between lower and upper body, and it creates this huge amount of tension or stretch across the body to be able to release. You know, once that's finally released and you start to turn the barrel, the bat is able to be whipped through here at ridiculous speed. It's something that you'll see in every elite hitter. I've yet to look at an elite hitter and not see this move in some way. So it's a super important move. Bonds does it just as well or better than, you know, almost every or any hitter in the world. You know, one of the reasons why he was able to create such a short, quick, tight swing that had ridiculous bat speed. The other thing, or a couple other things that, that Bonds does really, really well, and it really stands out when I watch it, if you watch this video from the side, is that, again, the bat is launched back, right? So you're going to see the bat launched this way. And what most amateur or young hitters or hitters that, um, you know, again, are not elite hitters that don't have elite bat speed, they launch the bat forward. They try to push the bat. They try to get the bat to go to the ball as quickly as possible. Where the really, really elite hitters do the opposite. They turn the barrel and they launch the bat backwards. So, again, if we just kind of watch how this bat attacks this ball. So, again, here's the pump of the hands. Now they're going to start to set back and up as the lower body moves forward and the back leg starts to turn. And then the bat is launched backwards. You know, when this happens, the swing is launched really, really suddenly. Boom. It's just boom, go. The bat speed is instant. And it's early. You're picking up bat speed really, really early in the swing. The other thing it does is it creates a path that's not only short and quick, but the bat is able to get into the hitting zone early. And I know this isn't the best view of it. And, you know, when you're looking at Bonds, you're looking at some older videos, so it's a little bit blurry. But the bat gets into the hitting zone really, really early. And it stays in the hitting zone for a long time. And it works on path with the ball. So it works slightly up through the zone, right? All really, really good things. Again, we won't go into depth about why that's so important, but definitely go back and watch our other videos on it if you have not seen our videos in the past. So this move, you know, is creating a sudden launch, a quick launch, a path that's quick, that attacks from the inside, that gets on path early. This ball is destroyed. The other thing that you'll see that is kind of works in conjunction with the barrel working back is the rear shoulder working under. Again, a myth in baseball is that you have to keep your shoulders level. Well, if you keep your shoulders level, you'll never be able to create the type of path that you want, and you'll never be able to create a barrel that works in this manner where it works rearward. And you'll never be able to accelerate the barrel as fast as you want. You'll never have the bat speed that you want. It just doesn't happen. You can watch any elite hitter, take anyone, and you're always going to see the rear shoulder work underneath the front shoulder, right? It's a move that helps accelerate the barrel, but it also helps set up your body in a position where you can create the type of path that you want. And, you're, you know, again, if you, if you don't do this, you're going to push the bat at the ball. You'll never create good bat speed. That's going to be out in front, and it's going to be an upper body swing. And here's another angle of it. Again, this ball's up, and you're still going to see the back shoulder work under the front shoulder. It's got to happen. You know, there's so many bad habits built into young players because they're told a thousand times, don't drop your shoulder, don't drop your shoulder, don't drop your shoulder. It's like probably one of the number one things you hear at youth baseball. Yet you have to drop your shoulder and you have to let the shoulder work under the front shoulder. Yeah, it's a feeling of working under that allows you to accelerate the barrel and also get on path. 
You know, and a lot of people say, well, he can get away with it because he's Barry Bonds and he's on steroids. No. The reason he's Barry Bonds is because of the swing, because he allows, you know, it's not just the back shoulder working under, but it's all of these things that we're talking about. And again, yeah, steroids might help you hit a few more homers, but regardless, the guy was raking before he ever went on steroids. So again, these are just a couple of things I, I noticed when I watched Bonds' swing. You know, for me, again, probably one of the prettiest swings you'll see. Not just the prettiest. It's, you know, it doesn't, for me, pretty doesn't really matter. It's, does a swing get the job done, right? It doesn't have to be pretty. Bonds just happens to have a really, really pretty swing, yet an efficient swing, you know, great bat quickness, great bat speed, and a path that is, you know, perfect for what you're trying to do, trying to get in the zone early and stay there for a long time with really good direction. Just, again, everything you want. There's a reason why he's, best hitter or one of the best hitters to ever walk the planet right numbers are just absolutely ridiculous so let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below i'd love to hear what you guys have to say i know there's going to be a lot of people that drop the steroids remark um and, and that's fine but let me know if you have any questions on the swing if you if you notice anything throw it in there anything that i may have missed again i can't hit on everything um but one that shoot out kind of the main things that i see in the swing that i think really really helped him become one of those great elite hitters um of all time. So please subscribe to the channel if you're not done so already. Share this video with all your friends. Give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Check out our Instagram page, Anselin Baseball, on our Twitter feed, Bannon 99 where I'm posting videos every day for you guys. Check out the description box below where I've recommended a bunch of books I've been reading and also training tools we use with all of our players. Check out our website, Um, where you can find more info on how to work with us and also be part of our teams. And that's all I got for you guys. Thank you again for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Good luck to you guys that are playing in your seasons right now. And we will talk to you later.